Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome to my wrap up for July. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in the month of July. So July for me was Jane Austen July, so I mostly read books relating to Jane Austen. I read 16 books in July, four of those were unpublished books that I read for work, I work for a publishing company, um, and then the other 12 books were books that I read for Jane Austen July. I am actually going to talk about 13 books today though, because um, there was one book that I finished on like the 4th of August, um, which was a Jane Austen July book, so I'm just going to include it in this wrap up because it seems silly to talk about it in August when it fits with the theme of this wrap up and Jane Austen July, so yes. I feel like I've said Jane Austen July too many times now, let's get into the books. So let's start off with Jane Austen because I did read quite a lot of things by Jane Austen in July. Um, I read four books by Jane Austen in July. Um, so I read some of her Juvenalia, this is The Beautiful Cassandra which is a little collection of her Juvenalia. I have read this little book so many times. It contains some of my favourite pieces of Jane Austen's Juvenalia, chiefly Jack and Alice, which is my favourite piece of her early teenage writings. It is hilarious and bizarre and just completely weird and I just thoroughly enjoy it. So this was a lovely read as always. And then I read three Jane Austen novels, as you do. Um, so first off I read Pride and Prejudice, which I listened to on audiobook. I have a wonderful audiobook narrated by Rosamund Pike, which I now basically listen to every July and it's very, very delightful. And it's like a 12 hour audiobook and somehow I always seem to manage to read it in like three or four days and it's just it's just wonderful. I love Pride and Prejudice so much. And there's something lovely about listening to an audiobook of a book that you know really well and just like enjoying it all over again in a really like comforting way. If you don't know what Pride and Prejudice is about, it is about the Bennett family, um, five sisters, um, chiefly the elder two sisters Elizabeth and Jane and their kind of romantic relationships. It's about marriage and money and society and it's just such a wonderful read, one of my favourite books of all time and one of my favourite books to reread as well. I just love it so very very much. I also reread Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. This is my second favourite Jane Austen novel after Pride and Prejudice and one that I'm very fond of. Mansfield Park follows um, the character of Fanny Price who at a young age is sent to live with her much wealthier relations. Um, she is raised with her cousins um, but always kind of preserving the distinction between them in that she is from a poorer family and she is always made to feel that especially by her very horrible aunt Aunt Norris. And this novel basically follows Fanny's relationship with her cousins and what happens when a new pair, a brother and sister, move into the area of Mansfield Park and kind of disrupt everything. I love Mansfield Park a lot. I think it is a truly wonderful novel and I just I just adore it. I love Fanny Price's character. She is quiet and um, reserved but she's also got like this amazing moral strength to her. So I very much enjoyed Mansfield Park as always. I also um, read this in physical form when the last few times I've reread it I've listened to it so it was really nice to read it physically again. Then this month I also read Persuasion which is my third favourite Jane Austen novel so pretty good Jane Austen month for me. Persuasion I listened to on audiobook which was quite nice because I'd never listened to Persuasion on audiobook before although I will say that the audiobook I was listening to was not the greatest. Um, I listened to the audiobook narrated by Nadia May. I, I listened to this one just because that was what my library had on offer but the voices were not amazing. Um, there wasn't like much distinction between the voices. I love Persuasion as a book but I think there are probably better audiobooks out there so it isn't necessarily the audiobook I'd recommend if you want to listen to Persuasion. Persuasion if you don't know follows Anne Elliot. She is 27 years old, she's unmarried um, and eight years ago she was engaged to a man who um, she broke off her engagement with after her um, family friend persuaded her that he wasn't good enough for her. Um, and then eight years have passed and Captain Wentworth comes back into her life having made something of himself um, being now considered a much better catch and they meet again and everything goes on from there. I love Persuasion a lot, it's really really wonderful. Jane Austen is just superb and I love rereading her work very very much. This month I also read two books by contemporaries of Jane Austen. The first was a play, Lover's Vows by Elizabeth Inchbold. Um, Lover's Vows was a play that I was really excited to read and really interested to read because it is a play that is mentioned in Mansfield Park. It is a play that uh, the characters of Mansfield Park put on as an amateur dramatics performance. So it's really cool to read it and like understand all the little references and like think about which characters in Mansfield Park were playing who in Lover's Vows. 
Lover's Vows as a play chiefly focuses on a mother and son um, and the mother has a kind of scandalous past that the son is going to find out about um, which is all connected with um, a baron who lives nearby and everything kind of goes on from there. It is a little bit scandalous for the time, um, though not super scandalous now. It is a little bit over the top but it's also really fun and I actually really really enjoyed it. In general I would say when I read literature from the time of Jane Austen and before I don't tend to love it but I think that's partly because I've been reading like late 18th century and early 19th century novels rather than plays because actually I really enjoyed Lover's Vows. I found it a really fun reading experience and yes it is a bit silly in places but I really really enjoyed it and I found it really readable and accessible and just really really good fun. Like I really really enjoyed the reading experience of it so actually maybe when I read stuff from the time of Jane Austen I just need to read more plays um, because I did really enjoy Lover's Vows and I thought it was really great fun. It was nice as well because I feel like in previous Jane Austen July's the reading book by a contemporary of Jane Austen challenge has always been a challenge where I've read something that I haven't loved um, so it was nice to read something that I really did enjoy. And in fact the other thing I read for this challenge I also enjoyed. This is The Woman of Colour. This is a novel from 1808. It was published anonymously um, and it is about a mixed race heiress who comes from Jamaica to England in order to kind of um, form an arranged marriage with her cousin and her father has left her um, his fortune on the condition that she marries her white cousin in England. Um, so Olivia travels across um, the sea um, to England where she meets her cousin and everything kind of goes on from there but there's lots of other very complicated things going on too. It is very much one of the like late 18th early 19th century sentimental novels like some of the like emotional stuff in it is quite over the top. It's all written in the form of letters that Olivia is writing to her governess back in Jamaica and her writing style is kind of quite like florid and emotional like you can just imagine um, the things that Olivia is saying is like the kind of things that Marianne Dashwood would say in Jane Austen um, and I haven't actually read that many like sentimental novels from this time period I know about it as a form and some of the non-fiction I read this month was kind of talking about it as a form but I haven't read that many sentimental novels so it's quite fun to read this and kind of look at that kind of particular way of expressing emotion which Jane Austen kind of parodies and uses um, in her juvenilia, short stories like Love and Friendship or in her novels such as, as I said, Marianne and Sense and Sensibility. Um, but not only is this book really interesting to read as a kind of sentimental novel and I should read more of that, but also it has this really interesting element in that the main character is a mixed race heroine which is quite unusual for the time period. And the way this book looks at race and the way different people treat Olivia um, and the very awful ways in which they treat her but also like the complexity of that awfulness and how various people treat her in different terrible ways is really powerful and really like horrible but really interesting to read about um, and I, I thought that made this such a fascinating read. I'd never heard of this book before, someone in the comments uh, recommended it to me and I found it truly fascinating and I would highly highly recommend it. I think it's really really interesting. So this was a really interesting read in terms of the kind of topics and themes that it deals with um, and the unusualness of it. It also has quite an unusual ending. I found the ending of the novel quite abrupt um, and at first I was like a little bit dissatisfied and then the more I think about it the more I quite like the ending. Um, I think, I don't know, it was a really interesting read. Also I would highly recommend this edition because this edition has a lot of extra material in it. The editor Lyndon J. Dominique has pulled together a lot of um, kind of extra sources and extra material about people of colour in late 18th and early 19th century um, society um, including lots of like extracts from other novels and poems and non-fiction works from the time and there's also like a lot of essay material at the beginning um, and quite a lot of speculation on who the author could be. The editor of this edition does believe that this book was written by a woman of colour um, though obviously we, we can't be certain because it was published anonymously and we don't know anything about the writer but it was just really interesting to read like all the extra material around this book and also it's a really interesting novel in itself so highly recommend this and I'm very grateful to the person who recommended it in the comments and actually if anyone else else has any recommendations for um, 19th century literature set in Britain featuring characters of colour, um, I would really appreciate that. I was really grateful for this recommendation, so this was a great read and one I would highly recommend.
Then I also read four non-fiction books this month, all in relation to Jane Austen, which is a lot of non-fiction for me, but actually I really enjoyed it. Um, so the first thing I read was a memoir of Jane Austen by James Edward Austen Lee. James Edward Austen Lee was Jane Austen's nephew and um, in the 1860s, 1870s, he published a memoir of Jane Austen, but kind of about his recollections of her, about her life um, and about what kind of various other members of the family thought about her. I found this a really interesting read. Um, I probably found it more interesting than informative in that it is a bit biased and also there's just like big gaps um, where he just didn't know certain things about her life um, or where he didn't want to talk about certain aspects of her life. Um, and like Victorian biographies sometimes do, there's just like very long extracts from letters with no context or commentary. But it is really interesting to read that kind of more personal account of Jane Austen and to see what Jane Austen's family wanted her legacy to be. So I found it a really interesting read and it is definitely one I would recommend. And then I also read another biography of Jane Austen, The Real Jane Austen, A Life in Small Things. I listened to this on audiobook actually, though I have a physical copy here from the library. Um, and this was a really interesting read and one that I really, really enjoyed. Um, it is a fascinating biography of Jane Austen which rather than being structured chronologically is basically structured thematically. The author Paula Byrne takes um, various like objects which either are actually from Jane Austen's life or are just from Jane Austen's time period um, and basically goes through these objects one by one using them to look at a particular area of Jane Austen's life such as her love of literature or her knowledge of the navy or her family and you know that kind of thing and it actually works really really well and means that there are some things explored that I haven't found explored in other Jane Austen biographies um, and there are some really kind of interesting points made so in general I really really enjoyed it possibly not the best place to start with the Jane Austen biography because it isn't chronological and um, so unless you know a bit about her life and family you might get lost but in general it was a really interesting read. Then this month I also read Meet the Georgians by Robert Peel um, which I really enjoyed. This is a very fun and accessible non-fiction book um, which basically takes 12, I think it's 12, um, figures from Georgian history, important interesting figures, some of which I had heard of like um, Lord Byron or Lady Hamilton, some of whom I've never heard of, um, and it looks at their lives and kind of uses just sort of mini biographies of these people to explore the Georgian period as a whole. This is a form of history book that I very very much enjoy. I really like it when historians kind of take one case study and use that to explore a much bigger period. That's one of my favourite things <laughs> when history books do that. Um, so I really very much enjoyed that in Meet the Georgians. Um, and it is a really good fun interesting read. It's very accessible, it's very like irreverent and witty and sort of laughing at the madness of the Georgian period while also clearly um, the writer is massively kind of enjoying the craziness of the Georgian period in some ways so that's really a fun aspect of it too um, and it's also very good I think at showing the kind of variety and um, kind of global reach of the Georgian period I suppose. The publishers very kindly sent me a review copy, both a physical and an audio review copy of the book um, and I listened to an audiobook and it's a really good audiobook actually, I would recommend it like most of the segments are read by a different person which is quite fun and because as I said it is quite a like witty history I think it works very nicely on audiobook too. So definitely one that I would recommend and the last line of the book made me think that the author is working on a um, follow-up book called Meet the Victorians. I don't know if that's certain, but that's what the last line of the book heavily implied to me, and I, I really want that book to come out because I would, I would definitely read that very much, so I'm hoping that's a thing because that would also be great fun. This is a really good read, definitely would recommend it. It was very good fun, just my kind of history book. And then I also read Jane Austen Early and Late. Um, this was the book that I finished on like the 4th of August. Um, I didn't actually finish this during Jane Austen July, but as it is a book about Jane Austen, I thought I might as well include it in this wrap up. This is a proof copy, this is coming out later this year and it's being published by Princeton University Press, who very kindly sent me a review copy. Um, so this is a work of academic non-fiction um, about the kind of early and late work of Jane Austen, but also kind of how Jane Austen's work might have changed or not changed over time. 
I really enjoyed many things about this. Um, it was really nice to read something that talked about Jane Austen's juvenilia especially because I love Jane Austen's juvenilia and it's not spoken about very much. And it was interesting as well to read a discussion of how sort of various critics have really dismissed Jane Austen's early work. Um, and I liked how she talks about um, Jane Austen's kind of last works as well. Um, you know, the unfinished works like Sanditon um, and the poem that Jane Austen wrote a few days before her death. So this was a really interesting read for kind of exploring those elements of Jane Austen's works. I will say that this is very academic. Um, I would say that this is mostly pitched at people who are studying Jane Austen at a kind of university level. I haven't read academic literary criticism like this for quite a few years and I kind of really enjoyed it um, but also I feel like it wouldn't necessarily be for everyone and so definitely one worth reading if you are kind of more academically interested in Jane Austen um, and especially in her kind of early late work and how her writing might have changed over time um, but possibly not one if you're looking for a lighter Jane Austen nonfiction. Then I also read three Jane Austen retellings this month. Um, one of them was a collection of short stories, Sense and Sensibility by Karen Tay Yamashita. So the first half of this book is um, short stories which have nothing to do with Jane Austen um, but are chiefly about kind of growing up as Japanese American um, during the 1960s and 70s um, and then the second half of the collection is short stories that are all about Jane Austen. Um, there are seven stories which are um, Jane Austen retellings of each novel including Lady Susan which I really enjoyed. So there were some things I really liked about this book, some things I liked less. In general it was a bit too literary for me um, and I would have liked a bit more plot in some of the short stories um, but it was also quite an interesting read. I quite enjoyed the Jane Austen retellings, they were all quite interesting and I enjoyed the different endings um, that the author gave her heroines. I especially liked the Mansfield Park retelling and the Lady Susan retelling. The Mansfield Park one especially actually I really enjoyed um, but also each short story kind of tries to retell like the whole of a Jane Austen novel in one like 10 page short story which as you can imagine does mean it feels a little bit rushed. Um, and the other thing I would say is that um, the afterword of this book um, the author Karen talks about how she has a sister called Jane um, um, who loves Jane Austen so much and that that's why she was inspired to write these stories and I think you can tell that it's not the author who loves Jane Austen. I think you can tell that the author is kind of like theoretically interested in Jane Austen and academically interested in Jane Austen but she doesn't love Jane Austen and I feel like I miss that love. Like that's what I really like about Jane Austen retellings is the love that is infused through them for Jane Austen and I feel like that was slightly lacking here so it was a really interesting read still um, but it wasn't my highlight of the month. Then I also read Jane Fairfax by Joan Aiken um, which I read on ebook. This is a retelling of Emma as you might guess from the perspective of Jane Fairfax. So the first like maybe two thirds of the book is is a kind of prequel to Emma following Jane Fairfax's life before Emma um, and then the last third of the book takes place like during the action of Emma. I really enjoyed this, I thought it was a really good fun read, thoroughly enjoyable to read, um, very delightful, great dialogue, you know interesting character relationships um, and a really interesting different take on Emma. I really like Jane Fairfax as a character so it was nice to read something from her perspective and I really liked like Jane's interactions with Emma um, and how their relationship worked as well as Jane's relationship with various other characters um, some of whom you know are characters from the novel Emma and some of them are characters who never appear like on screen in Emma but are mentioned so I really enjoyed that too. I'm not sure that every character fitted precisely with my interpretation of um, Jane Austen's novel but I still found it a really interesting read and um, I think my one complaint was that I found the ending a little bit disappointing. I don't know what it was but like the very ending just felt a little bit flat for me um, but in general I thought it was a really strong read, definitely one that I would recommend and a really good fun retelling of Emma. I know that Joan Aiken um, also wrote a um, sequel to Mansfield Park called Mansfield Revisited and also wrote a um, extension of um, Jane Austen's unfinished fragment The Watsons. So I'm sure I'll be reading some more books by Joan Aiken in future Jane Austen Julys. Then finally this month I also read Pride by Evie Zaboy. This is a YA contemporary retelling of Pride and Prejudice. 
In this book we're following um, a 17 year old girl, Zuri, who lives with her four sisters um, in a particular part of Brooklyn called Bushwick um, and her neighbourhood is kind of changing quite a lot, it's becoming quite gentrified and across the road move in um, a very wealthy family, the Darcys, um, including their two sons Ainsley and Darius. Um, Ainsley is our Mr Bingley character and Darius is our Mr Darcy character um, and it's following the relationships between these two households and also kind of how Zuri's neighbourhood is changing um, and also how kind of Zuri's family is changing. Um, her elder sister Janie um, has gone away to college for a year and is back for the summer but is kind of moving on with her life and Zuri knows that she is probably going to go to college in a year and that's really going to change her life. Their neighbourhood is changing, um, her family is changing and she's kind of trying to cope with all of this while also um, very much disliking Darius Darcy from across the road while also being slightly drawn to him. I really really love this. This is so fun and so funny. It's really really hilarious but also just like a really fun enjoyable interpretation of Pride and Prejudice um, and I just really liked it. Like it's just a thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable read and it's one of those books that is like I said exceptionally funny, exceptionally fun but also does deal with quite a lot of more serious themes under the surface which I really enjoyed. I really liked Azuri as a character and her relationship with Darius I thought was really well done and very believable. I also very much enjoyed the fact that the main character Azuri writes poetry and we get some of her poetry throughout the book and her poetry was really good. Like I would totally read a whole book of just that poetry so I need to find out if um, Evie Zaboy is also a poet. Like I feel like usually when I read um, a novel in which a character is writing poetry and that poetry appears in the book, the poetry is quite quite poor but this poetry was excellent and I really really enjoyed it like as much as everything else going on in the book. In general this was just a really fun read and I would highly highly recommend this. I think this would be a great pick for anybody's Jane Austen July next year if you're looking for early recommendations. This was a very enjoyable read and very very good fun. So there we go, those are all the books that I read in the month of July. Um, I did successfully tick off all the reading challenges for Jane Austen July though less successful on watching challenges I must confess um, and I also did manage to tick off everything on our Jane Austen bingo board which on reflection may have been slightly easier than we anticipated because many of these things happen many times in many of Jane Austen's books but that's fine. Um, please do let me know how your Jane Austen July went, what did you read, what was your highlight of the month and that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.